From the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, WYLN Evening Edition at 5.30 starts right now. Good evening. It's Tuesday, June 28, 2016. I'm Paula Degnan, in for Ann Gownley. A man accused of murder four years ago had his bench trial today. 37-year-old Oscar Lozano Garcia was accused of killing his girlfriend, 32-year-old Maria Brea, then stuffing her body into a plastic bag and trying to hide it in the locked attic of an East Diamond Avenue apartment four years ago. He then took off for Mexico. Garcia waived his right to a jury trial and opted for a bench trial in front of President Judge Richard Hughes. That trial started this morning at Penn Place in Wilkesbury. Garcia is facing an open count of criminal homicide, which will be refined for first or second degree murder. He's looking at life if the judge finds him guilty of first degree murder. Tuition at Luzerne County Community College is going up. The Board of Trustees approving a 4% increase, raising a full semester cost from $1,800 to $1,875 for Luzerne County residents. The hike is part of an operating budget of $43.9 million, which is up from $42 million for the year 2015-16. When the Wilkes-Barre Area School Board meets tonight, there's expected to be a new superintendent named. Although no specific name has been confirmed, there is one floating around at the top of the list. That's Brian Costello. He's currently the district's director of curriculum and instruction. The current superintendent announced in February that he planned to retire in August. The school board also planning to vote on a final budget for 2016-17 tonight. That would include a property tax hike. There was a fatal wrong-way accident on Interstate 80 eastbound in the Poconos this morning. It happened between the Tannersville and Bartonsville exits right around 6 a.m. The accident involved a Schweppes tractor trailer, a pickup truck, SUV, and a car. Authorities say the pickup crossed the median and drove west in the eastbound lane for about half a mile before striking the tractor trailer head-on. A New Jersey man was killed though authorities have not yet released his name. All lanes of Interstate 80 eastbound near Tannersville were closed for several hours earlier today, but have since reopened. It's a long way from finished, but the State House Appropriations Committee passed a first draft state budget by a wide 36 to 1 margin on Monday. It totals $31.6 billion. It includes a $200 million increase in K-12 education to a record $5.9 billion, plus $50 million more for special and early education. It also contains $10 million for Governor Tom Wolf's new initiatives to tackle the heroin and opioid addiction crisis. The proposed budget also includes $150 million in revenue from recently previously passed modernization of state liquor sales and laws, $1 per pack cigarette tax hike, new levies on chewing tobacco, e-cigarettes and other tobacco products, and $317 million from expanded gambling. The budget deadline is coming up on Friday. According to a release from PennDOT, the area of Route 309 near Klein Township will be closed for two weekends in July for construction. WILN's Abby Pascal has the details. People say that it's just water under the bridge, but for PennDOT, it's water under the road. A two-weekend construction project will begin on July 8th on Route 309 just north of Jackson Street in Klein Township, where a small pipe that is known as a box culver lies under the road, allowing water to pass through it. We spoke with Regional Press Director for PennDOT, James May, who explained to us what a box culver is and what they will be working on. What's taking place here on 309 is we're, we're going to be replacing a box culver. It's a small pipe that goes underneath the road, but obviously when you're ripping something like that out, even if it's a, a foot wide or 50 feet wide, you can't let the traffic go over that because it's going to be a hole in, in the road there. A project such as this typically takes a large amount of time, so instead of doing it piece by piece, allowing up to months of construction, 
PennDOT has decided to completely shut down the area and finish it within the weekends of July 8th and July 15th. One of the things that we're really beginning to do more of is to do these type of things in just a couple of weekends. It used to be that we'd go in and maybe take half of the pipe out, let the traffic go through, and it would take many months to repair something like this. But it's sort of like you know, taking off a Band-Aid, is it better to do it real slowly or do it all at once? We're finding it's much easier to do this all at once. So over the, the weekend of July 8th and then the weekend of July 15th, uh, in Schoolkill County on 309, they're going to be going in and in two weekends going in and replacing this box culvert that goes underneath the road. That section of Route 309 in Klein Township will be shut down and the whole road will be torn up. May said that while it can be a little more of an inconvenience to motorists, the project will take a shorter amount of time. From the state's end, whenever we close down a road like this, or whenever we have any type of detour, we only detour on the state roads. So people will look sometimes and say, well, isn't there a shorter detour that you could have had? The official detour will, will always be on a state road. So like in this case, it'll go on 424 to 81. Traffic tends to be like water and electricity many times. The locals especially know the quickest way to get from point A to point B. And in that case, there, there will be other roads that I'm sure many of the locals will take, but the official detour will be 424 and 81. Again, the project will be taking place on the weekends of July 8th and July 15th, beginning at 6 a.m. Motorists traveling north through the area are recommended to use Interstate 81 or Route 424 to connect back to Route 309 north. Southbound travelers are recommended to use Interstate 81. In Klein Township, for WILN News, I'm Abby Piskel. A new president for the McAdoo Lions Club will be installed on July 15th. A face familiar to WILN and our viewers, our own Gary Perna, will become president of the McAdoo Lions Club at the club's annual installation dinner July 15th. Perna has been a member of the club since 2010 and has held the third vice president and second vice president positions. As part of his presidency, he hopes to bring the McAdoo area together and have other service and community organizations work together to build a stronger community. Lions Club International is the largest service organization in the world. 1.4 million members perform service projects in over 200 countries and geographic areas around the world. Congratulations, Gary. Time now for a first look at our forecast. Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic is in the Weather Center with all the details. Joe? Well, thank you very much, Paula. Some showers, thunderstorms today. We had the mugginess in the weather, if you will. And uh, next couple of days, oh, not looking too bad, but we're getting closer and closer to the holiday weekend. What's in store for us as we get to that holiday weekend. I'll have complete full details for you coming up in just a little bit. Paul. Thanks, Joe. And that's going to be a big question on everybody's mind. Coming up next, it is almost July and that means celebrations aplenty. We have a preview. Don't go away. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, Gary Perna, Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Chief Videographer Mike Lula, Weather with meteorologist Joe Garbacic and sports with Eric D. Berardinas. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Visit the Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau website at tournapa.com for the listings of the many events you will find in Luzerne County. From wine festivals, hill climbs, tomato and kielbasa festivals, you will find it all in Luzerne County. Luzerne County was named the best outdoors destination in Pennsylvania by the official Best in PA website. The Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau will help you relax, relive history, and marvel at the area's stunning natural beauty. Luzerne County, you'll find it right here in Northeast PA. 
WYLN will be broadcasting a musical salute to all who serve. The concert Monday, July 4th at 6 p.m. The concert was held June 11th at the Wiltsey Center in Hazleton. It featured patriotic selections performed by the Hazleton Philharmonic Orchestra under the direction of Robert Lagana. Master of Ceremony retired Staff Sergeant Eric Olson narrated the program, which paid tribute to local fire, police and emergency responders, along with all four branches of the military. The concert features George Cohan favorites such as Give My Regards to Broadway, and Mary's a grand old name. Congressman Lou Barletta and Hazleton Police Chief Jerry Speziali took to the podium to recite historical readings. The crowd also entertained by a Star Wars medley featuring some iconic characters. Again, WILN will be broadcasting the entire concert next Monday right after the news here at 5.30. Communities around the country will be celebrating the 4th of July with traditional fireworks displays. Around our area, we've compiled a list where you can catch some of those fireworks displays. Now helping to solve or prevent the crime is just a text away. Text my tips to the word crimes and let the law help you. Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton based broadcasted television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional air times. Only on WYLN TV 35, we're your local network. All right, shall we start building the boat across our area? I'll tell you what, guess what? It's raining. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to tell, you don't have to have me tell you that. It is just downright pouring across parts of our area right now. we got uh, some showers and thunderstorms moving through. And this, of course, is going to bring an end to the uh, humidity that we had across our area today. Very muggy and sticky conditions. And as we head into uh, tomorrow, it's going to bring in some much uh, cooler and more refreshing air. Let's get on to the graphic for today and uh, take a look at the uh, temperature now. Uh, the 70s we were at a little bit earlier. Since then, the uh, thunderstorms moved in, at least here at our station. And as those uh, storms moved in, it kind of cooled things down. And right now we're actually in the 60s. And that number you see on the screen was prior to the rain. Now we picked up just about a third of an inch of rain. And that number continues to climb. So we did get up to 77, that was a little bit after 3. And then 
Clouds moved in, some of the storm started rolling in. A very muggy start to our morning, only getting down to 66 degrees. So throughout the uh, Commonwealth of uh, Pennsylvania, again, the showers and uh, thunderstorms making their way toward the east. And the further east you go now, that's where the clouds are on the increase and that's where the storms are. The further west you go, that's where things are uh, starting to clear out and wherever we have those showers and storms, that of course brings down those temperatures quite a bit, makes it more refreshing. Onto uh, the winds. And uh, again, these are sustained winds, not too much, but get the storms move in and really they start to crank up those winds and bring in uh, some decent wind gusts across our area. So speaking of uh, what we can expect the next couple of days, here's what we can expect. Uh, 72 degrees as we head into uh, tomorrow, a mix of sun and uh, clouds. And as we go into our Thursday, looking pretty nice with a lot of sunshine, about 77 degrees. And then going into our Friday, well, we'll see a mix of sun and clouds. We may have to deal with a shower or two around, maybe even a thunderstorm, 77. And going into the holiday weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, looking pretty nice. A mix of sun and clouds. Should be dry at this point in time. Temperatures generally in the mid to upper 70s to near 80 degrees. And then going into Tuesday of next week, maybe another shower, thunderstorm. But overall, seven-day forecast not looking too bad. We'll have more for you coming up after the break. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You'll meet Juan, who had a motorcycle injury way back when he was a teenager that came back to cause some problems for him later on in life. Now, with great chiropractic care, he's better. His daughter's getting help. His son goes for wellness. We just have to get his wife in. Their story this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. Watch off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. The representative of Pennsylvania's 11th Congressional District, Lou Barletta, has been keeping himself busy in Washington, D.C. WYLN's Aaron Harvey has more. Last night, Congressman Lou Barletta stopped by Booty's Place in Hazleton. Barletta says President Obama overstepped his legal authority last week in relation to the Illegal Immigration Relief Act. Recently, the Supreme Court, in a 4-4 decision, decision, shot down President Obama's executive amnesty, uh, which I thought was was good news. You know, the president obviously overstepped his his legal authority in uh, in uh, creating amnesty uh, for what was going to be about five million uh, people who were in the country illegally. Uh, I had uh, had passed. Uh, a bill that would have uh, stopped, tried to stop the president's uh, illegal action, uh, but thankfully the court stepped in and uh, and took care of it for us. Um, you know, this again is just another example of just because the president doesn't like uh, what Congress did or didn't do doesn't mean that he has the right to do it either. There's there's a separation of powers, and only Congress can write laws, not the president. Barletta has been keeping himself busy. He recently passed a bill that involves opioid addiction. I just had a bill passed uh, dealing with opiate addiction for babies. Unfortunately, every 25 minutes, a baby in the United States is born addicted to opiates. Uh, and no fault to the baby, this is the way that, uh, you know, this child enters the world addicted. Congress, back in 1976, had passed uh, a bill that would give states money to treat these babies when they're born addicted because of their mothers who, who are addicted. Um, and unfortunately, only nine states were actually doing anything about it, and they were keeping the money, the federal money and dollars, and using them somewhere else. I had passed a, I passed a bill that would uh, require and, and, and make uh, the Health and Human Services uh, verify that states have a safe care plan for these babies. With the recent shooting in Orlando, Barletta expresses his concerns with ISIS. The shooting in Orlando was a, was a horrific uh, uh, crime. Unfortunately, our prayers and you know our prayers go out to to uh, the families. 
uh, of all, all the victims there. But, you know, this is an, another example of the fact that ISIS is not a JV team. As the president said, ISIS has uh, moved into the next chapter where they are radicalizing Americans. So we no longer need to only worry about people who are able to come here through our open borders. But now we have to worry about Americans uh, who have become radicalized over social media. And I think we're going to see more of this. I serve on the House uh, Homeland Security Committee, and uh, unfortunately, um, it's a real problem where many Americans now are joining ISIS. For WILN News, I'm Aaron Harvey. Coming up next, in for Eric DeBerardinas, John Eric Poli has sports here on WILN. Stay tuned. I'm Tiffany Cloud, host of The Storm and panelist during WYLN 35's live election night coverage. I volunteer my time hosting the American Cancer Society Telethon and helping plan the Society's Season of Hope Gala. And I also support veteran organizations such as the Valor Clinic, which feeds, clothes, and shelters homeless veterans. I believe it's important to give back to our community. WYLN has strong ties to the community and it's committed to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society telethons. WYLN's commitment to Pennsylvania continues with the broadcast of Hazleton's Fun Fest Parade and the Christmas and St. Patrick's Day parades in Wilkesbury. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants to Spare Hill Climb. And throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other community events. WYLN, we're your local network. Today, the sports world lost two icons. The first being former Philadelphia Eagles head coach Buddy Ryan, who died at the age of 82. Ryan was a defensive mastermind. In 1985, he was the defensive coordinator for the Super Bowl champion Chicago Bears, and he won a Super Bowl as the linebackers coach for the Jets in 1969. Ryan had two stints as a head coach with the Eagles and Cardinals, posting a 55-55-1 record. His two sons, Rex and Rob, are currently coaching together for the Buffalo Bills. Also today, basketball legend Pat Summit passed away at the age of 64. Summit coached the University of Tennessee from 1974 to 2012, when she retired due to her diagnosis with onset dementia in the form of Alzheimer's. During her long career with the Lady Vols, she won eight national championships and won 1,098 games, the most by any coach, male or female, in Division I history. She also coached the United States women's basketball team to their first ever gold medal in 1984. Now let's turn our attention to something that's not as depressing. depressing. Baseball action last night for the Iron Pigs and Rail Riders. Let's go to Bacon, USA first, where the Iron Pigs were trailing the Columbus Clippers one to nothing in the second until Darren Ruff puts one over the wall to tie things up at one. The Clippers would add two runs in the fourth and two more in the fifth to get the win, five to three. Now to the Rail Riders on the road taking on the Syracuse Chiefs as Donovan Salerno finds the left center gap, putting the Rail Riders up one to nothing in the second inning. Then to the top of the five, and I don't know why the Yankees haven't called this guy up yet. Aaron Judge hitting a bomb, his 16th on the year and his seventh in the last 10 games. Rail Riders get the win, final score, five nothing. This time of the year, kids are attending summer camps to try and better themselves. Here's our intern, Mike Gilbert, who hit the hardwood at Wilkes University for their basketball camp. Local youth hoopers are able to learn from Wilkes University players and coaches this week during head coach Izzy Metz's basketball camp. Kids of all ages in the Wilkes-Barre area and beyond take part in drills, play scrimmages, and have a little fun in the Wilkes U basketball facilities. The campers are enjoying a chance to play some ball and the opportunity to compete. I like when we get to scrimmage and do challenges. Counselors and current Colonel players have been through the summer camp scene before. Oh, it's just really nice to uh, get out and get all the local kids here. You know, I've been coaching basketball camps since I was, you know, since I was sixth grade. You know, I grew up going to local camps. So it's just nice to 
you know, go through like the whole system, like kind of be a player, then grow up and, you know, teach the kids. After a successful debut, this is the camp's second year in existence. Coach Metz knows exactly how to make a camp operate smoothly, thanks to his experience over the years. I just think that we try to make it fun, you know, for the kids in the area here to come and learn some drills and just learn about the game of basketball and just keep it fun and, you know, uh, just make it uh, a lively day so that they want to come back. Metz also is a product of the youth basketball camps and leagues and realizes the significance they have on the community. Yeah, it's a great area. I mean, you know, there's certainly a lot of people here, but once you get to know people, you know, there seems to be very tight in the community. And it's great to see some repeat campers. We've had uh, kids now the last couple of years been back, so it's been great. Reporting from Wilkes-Barre for WYLN Sports, I'm Mike Gilbert. Thanks for that, Mike. Up next, Joe Garbacic will be in with one last look at our forecast. Sergeant Ducey, let's go for a walk. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. A musical salute to all who serve will be broadcast on WYLN Monday, July 4th at 6 p.m. The show features the outstanding talent of the Hazelton Philharmonic Orchestra under the direction of Robert Lagana as well as featured soloists. Narrated by Staff Sergeant Eric Olson, host of the WYLN TV show Warrior Summon Outdoors. Watch a musical salute to all who serve presented by WYLN commercial free on July 4th. WYLN is proud to announce a huge technical upgrade to our channels that will bring a better digital picture and expanded coverage area to viewers all over Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. In addition to Channel 35.1 in Hazleton, you can watch a crystal clear picture in Berwick and Columbia County on Channel 47.1 and in East Stroudsburg on Channel 24.1. And we're proud to announce Pennsylvania's newest TV station, Channel 9.1 in Williamsport, serving Lycoming, Montour, Northumberland, and Union Counties. Now more than ever, WYLN is your local network. Well, it's not looking too bad of a seven-day forecast that's going to happen over the next seven days, of course. Tomorrow, Wednesday, a mix of sun and clouds in the 70s, about 72 degrees. It'll be more refreshing, low humidity levels. A little bit more comfortable to be outside. Going into our Thursday, lots of sunshine near 80 degrees. For our Friday, we may have to deal with a shower or thunderstorm or two around. That's about it. I'm not expecting a washout at all and then as we go into the holiday weekend at this point in time it does look pretty nice i think it should stay dry for any of the holiday festivities as well as fireworks displays friday saturday sunday monday like i said they look pretty good temperatures near 80 degrees even for the fourth, like you said on there, you can see for yourself, almost 80 degrees, looking good, lots of sunshine. Even in the Tuesday, near 80 degrees, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, but overall, it does look good. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And that's definitely what we like to see. And those overnight lows, not bad in the 50s. So the muggy weather that we had last night into today, boy, it's going to come to an end, at least for now. Well, some of those. And it was muggy. Some of those downpours, though. Woo! Yeah, some of the thunderstorms we've gave been everybody a good drink. Yeah, hope nice that to see that you dried off there, Joe. <laughs> For the most part, yeah. <laughs> I hope that didn't mess up any of your sports. Uh, it did a little bit, but it's all right. That's Mother Nature for you. Well, that'll do it. We can't argue with Mother Nature, but we can invite you to come back and join us again here on WILN. Have a great rest of your evening.